Hi there. As you know, I've done lots of dutching horse races with a view to training out and running. And generally what I do is uh, I obviously place the dutch and then I have an automated green up process that will green up for a particular target profit when the market profit reaches a certain point. And of course you can do that uh, Manually, if you've got the ladder, there's a button here, or if you're in the grid, there'll be a button appears here that you can manually click if you reach your target profit. But I've often wondered what happens, or what would happen, if instead of a normal Dutch, the bets that you place as part of the Dutch were actually trades with an offset lay that would automatically trade out once that point was hit. Uh, let me try and explain what I mean by that and where I'm coming from. To place a Dutch normally, you would go to the Dutching tool, select your two runners or three runners or however many you want, and click on Submit. So there we have our two runners. Now, you see that's the green up, the market green up button there uh, in ladder mode. Now, if that turns a certain value, let's say £20, what happens in that case is that there's a combination of the corresponding trade outs of both of these horses. Now, that can appear in a multitude of different ways. For example, both of these runners might shorten so that their combined greened up profit gives you the £20. However, one of them may actually shoot out in odds. So, this other one has to come in far enough not only to give you a £20 profit, but recover the red that would be on the other horse. And conversely, the roles could be swapped and you can have one this one running out and this one would need to come in enough. So it's the combination of those trade out positions on each of those runners. And you may find that you never get a market green up all hitting your target, despite the fact that independently, each of those runners may shorten significantly in running. They just don't do it in a way combined that gives you your £20 profit target. So what happens if you are able to place a trade instead? Well, there's no mechanism to do that. The dutching tool, when you come in here, does the calculations to specify a corresponding stake as a bet on your selected runners within the dutch. There's no mechanism that allows you to place an offset lay as part of that process. However, there is now, courtesy of that uh, technique from Andre at Benteco that I demonstrated to you uh, two or three videos back. Uh, so let me show you how to go about doing that. If we bring up the strategy editor, I've made a copy of the original strategy that I demonstrated the other day. And the important thing, everything else will be the same. The important thing is this one here. So we need to edit that. And if you recall, this particular technique uses the percentage book. The drawback being that you can't specify a particular liability for it. That was the one major drawback with it. The good thing about it, however, is that it doesn't use the dutching mechanism within the automation feature. It just simply places a bet. Well, we can do the same thing, except in this case, we can place a trade. So we need to choose all. We need to fix the odds as being... Uh, Oh, sorry, that should be best backers on. Beg your pardon. And then I'm going to set the offset as being 20% true and smart bets. And then we need to specify a bet size, and that has to be percentage book. And I'm going to use 100%. Another thing you need to do is to make sure you have keep switched on because although this trade is going to be submitted just before the off, the offset part of it has to be taken in running for them to be matched. And the conditions are exactly the same. 
I won't bother going through what all this means. If you look back at the original video I gave you uh, a few days back, it's called Dutching at Runtime. Uh, look that up if you wish to refresh your memory. And that's it. So we can now save that and we can assign this to a race. Now we'll do this one, but let me just switch simulation mode off and then back on and that'll clear away all the numbers that I've just been playing with. And if we go back to the grid and at the post. put that one in. Um, and all we need to do is to select our runner's concern. So let's just pick two runners, any mini miny mo, Master Milner, and something around the same odds. Master Milner's about five. All right, Vino Victrix. Again, I'm just randomly picking these. I would be a bit more sophisticated if I was doing this for real. So what should happen is, if you recall from the previous video, you'll get we'll get two small back bets put in there for a penny at odds of 1,000. And those are used to identify which runners are going to have the trade placed on them. So we'll then immediately get two bets placed in here, two back bets, and we'll get two unmatched lay bets, which are the closing part of the trade, and they'll be configured to be kept and taken and running. And that's it. So um, we'll just skip ahead to the beginning of the race. Okay, we are just approaching the start of the race, so we should see the small bets going in and appearing in the unmatched bets panel at the right hand side there. And then underneath in the matched bets panel, we should see our back bets going in. So there's our back bets and the corresponding lay bets. So Master Milner has been back to 4.8. And I don't know why that's come out at 4.8 there. That's a weird one. Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. Master Milner's 5.7. Sorry. And 4.8 lay bet. And Vino Victrix at 4.8. And trading out at 4. Had me worried there. Okay, so we just need to let this race go in running and see what happens. And hopefully both of these lay bets will be matched. You'll see that the small bets of a penny have disappeared. They weren't configured to be kept in running. Uh, as uh, I'm sure you remember, they were only there and used to identify which runners within the field would have bets placed on them. So this is a two-mile race. So I this is a good example in actual fact, because you can quite often find that one of your runners in your Dutch shortens significantly whilst the other one goes out, and, uh, and then they swap over. Uh, that happens quite a lot. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how these two go, keeping in mind that I made no effort to ascertain the quality of these horses. Uh, so we'll just uh, sit and watch the race and see how they get on. But it's something that you might want to play around with, particularly since the, the normal dutching method uh, doesn't allow you to do this. You have to rely on a green up option. Uh, so this may be a better option for you. So I'd recommend that you play around with it, play around with the numbers, um, play around with the green up options. So that's one of them taken. And of course, with one of them being taken, that automatically reduces your liability on the other runner. So that was quite a nice drop. So we're not even halfway through the race yet and you can see that one of our runners has shortened significantly in price and traded out. Uh, so that's great. Uh, we just need to see what will happen with uh, Master Milliner. Hopefully I've uh, randomly chosen correctly. I've got quite a good record at doing that when I'm doing these videos. Uh, so we'll see how we get on. It may have been better if I'd chosen a five furlong race. At least it would have been over quickly. So Master Milner was uh, backed at 5.7. So it's, it's essentially just hovering around its... Uh, 
entry point at the moment, so it needs to shorten still a bit uh, in order to trade out. But since one of them's already traded out, we, you can see the green up button at the top there. It's hovering around a scratch position for you. Now, in actual fact, what you well, there we go. I was about to say, uh, given the odds, the way they've changed, a green up all button would have done fine. So there you see um, there's no need to make a mechanism whereby you have to have a green up all procedure, either doing it manually or automatically. You can use this technique um, to green up the runners individually. Uh, so you might want to investigate that. And once again, a randomly selected horse when I'm doing a demonstration goes on to win. How many times does that happen? Okay, I think we'll pause and we'll let's jump ahead to another race, a shorter one. Let's see that in action again and uh, then we'll wrap the video up. Okay, we're nearly at the start of this race at Bath. Um, you'll see I've already assigned the strategy to the race and I've already selected my runners. Andre Mar, Silver Diva and Edge of the Bay. And I've done those for no particular reason other than the roads are a bit higher than the previous example. So we'll see how that one goes. In the meantime, before the race starts, let me just uh, recap what we've got. So if you wish to try this and uh, see how you get on, things to note or things you might want to play around with is the offset and the percentage book. Other than that, leave everything as it is. Okay, those are the those are the two important uh, ones that you may want to fiddle around with to see which suits you best. Okay, we're just about at the start of the race, although they're just at the post. They haven't started loading yet, so that might take a wee while. There's our bets have gone in. Our three back bets. And our lay is waiting, and the sort of control bets, if you like, uh, as you saw in the previous example, they'll disappear soon enough. Um, as I say, they haven't started loading yet, so let me just zip ahead to the start of the race. Okay, we're up and running, and uh, we'll see how we get on. Doesn't look like uh, Andre Mars going to do much, having <laughs> drifted in price drastically. So that's one of our runners taken. Uh, and so our liability has uh, been decreased by £10, uh, so that's fine. With any technique like this, of course, you can always manually trade out if you don't think it's going your way or you've reached a, a point where you're happy to take whatever profit is there. Now, in this particular instance, if I was to do the trading in the traditional way, in all likelihood it would have greened up there because the edge of the bay reached into the threes from 12.5. Uh, so it may well have been good enough to do it that way. Anyway, that lets you see the process. And finally, as a special treat and a way of thanking you all for the support that you've given me over the past few months with this YouTube channel. I've copied this demo strategy along with the sound files that work with it into my Google Drive account and made it available to you, the general public. The link is in the description. Thanks again, folks. Speak to you later.